What's going on guys, it's Roman from Empire Barbell. Today we're gonna to talk about some wave loaded sets. Real quick, if you found this helpful, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell. We're putting out content multiple times a week, so make sure you get it as it comes out so you don't have to play catch up. Go ahead and leave any questions or comments you have in the comment box. So the wave sets that we're gonna go over play off of uh, another topic we just covered, which is post-activation potentiation, meaning when you do a heavier attempt first, later efforts are actually much easier because you recruited those high threshold motor units that you wouldn't have otherwise hit if you just started into those lighter explosive efforts right off the bat. So it's kind of a, an exploitation of your nervous system that gets us a better result. Wave sets have been a useful method. Uh, Olympic weightlifting specifically has used it, but it has gotten some exposure in some other applications and we're gonna go over those today. So. The idea is that we start with a relatively light percentage and then we tick the weight up a little bit and then tick it up again and then we drop back, start over and build up. So every uh, run through is a little bit heavier. This is all taking place within one workout. Now we get a unique benefits. If we start with like this three set wave, for example, we do three at 80%, two at 85, one at 90, and then every run through is a little heavier. What is actually surprising is that every time we get back to this heavier set, even though we should be a little more fatigued, we actually tend to perform better and the set moves a little bit better. And this is actually taking people to new one rep maxes within a set workout. So there's three general scenarios where this would be recommended. One is with explosive movements, Olympic lifts, clean snatches and jerks, weighted plyometric movements where you can actually control the weight that you're using to a degree to actually mirror something like this and speed work. Deadlift, squat, and bench press speed work is often put through waves like this. Similarly, finding that the upper end range of the percentages that you're using all move better than they did in the beginning. I've used it successfully with odd movements or movements that require some type of technical refinement. Getting people to get comfortable with heavier log press attempts or one-arm dumbbell press attempts usually benefit by temporarily dropping the weight and then building back up. And a lot of squat variations that are kind of awkward or cumbersome in the beginning have worked similarly well as well. If you uh, aren't used to front squats, cambered bar squats, or some of the other kind of odd positioning that comes with other squat movement variations. Now notice I left deadlifts off of this list. Deadlifts tend to create fatigue at too fast a rate. So the fatigue actually works against you at a faster rate than the post-activation potentiation can help you. So you're gonna find you have a very hard time working this with deadlift type movements with any amount of poundages. You'll just fatigue too fast. Another good example is just uh, variety uh, for maximal work because the percentages get high and you do multiple sets, but there's more overall volume. So even in workouts where you don't get to actual one rep maxes, you find that you do more total reps, specifically more total reps at higher percentages. So there's kind of a density component. There's a, a heavy volume component that's a, a little bit new. So that might be a new stimulus that you can exploit if you are doing heavier work at a particular phase. So this is one of the most common examples you'll see and there's play in the joints for what these percentages actually are or what the reps are. It's gonna be best served with lower reps. This is not something you wanna do with high reps because again, fatigue just sets in too quick. Even at these reduced percentages, 80%, you can do a lot more than three reps, but the point is not to fatigue yourself too much across all these sets. You want bar speed high, you want force output high. So you would start at 80%, move up to 85 for a double and then 90 for a single and then reset. By the time you reset, that 82% is gonna fly. You're gonna notice it moves very quickly. As you move up, you should also be uh, a little bit impressed with how well that, that top 92% moves. And then again, for the third wave. Some protocols will have you continuously moving up through the waves until you miss one of these reps. Others might have you just do three simple waves and then progress evenly in the next workout. This is another example, and this is probably a better method of actually working up to a one rep max. In this example, we only run through two percentage brackets. Total volume is gonna be a lot lower because of that. It's gonna mean you're not gonna fatigue so much. So you're probably gonna be a little bit better off for hitting a, a one rep max. And these are just two variations. There's a ton of different wave progressions out there. Um, one isn't necessarily better than the other. You just gotta keep track of how much total work you're doing and how in line that is with what you're supposed to be doing at that phase of your training. So this has been used for Olympic lifts. Explosive, yes, but there's also a technical component. So you find that it can help you adapt to maintaining technique with more explosive movements uh, as the weight climbs up because your sense of the weight is gonna change as you run through each wave. You can do this to build neurological development with pressing movement. It works great with bench pressing, push pressing, uh, jerks, any overhead variation you use. This is gonna be a good protocol if you're in a phase where you need to steadily adapt 
to heavier loads, specifically in the context of a very technical movement. If you guys give this a run, uh, keep in mind uh, that recovery is mandated, so you wouldn't run this more than a few weeks without deloading. Uh, any time spent above 90%, specifically multiple runs at 90%, is going to require some dedication to recovery. That's either deloads, that's either resetting the lower percentages, something that's gonna allow you to clear out. So don't try to run this indefinitely and then be surprised when it backfires and you start to overtrain. Only three weeks of training at or above 90% with compound movements and then you move into a different phase or you deload and start over. Those are your options. So that's all I got for today, guys. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments in the comment box or take it to the forum, empire-forum.com. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Bronley at Empire Barbell. We'll see you.